I am an only child who's lived in the same home with my parents for my whole life, up until last year. That house is inherited from my grandparents before I was born, so it's where my parents had chosen to settle down and start a family. It took my parents 16 years to accept the fact that their house was just not ideal for raising a child. I wish that they had come to terms with this fact sooner, but I was thrilled when they announced last year that we'd be moving into a larger, newer home. There was a part of me that felt I'd missed the old, decaying house I'd grown up in, but that part of me was washed away by feelings of pure excitement for the new place. The new house wasn't brand new, of course. I was told that it was actually built around 80 years ago, just updated with brand new… well, everything. My excitement never wavered as we spent the next few weeks getting everything moved out of the old house and into the new one. I spent the following weeks in the background of my parents' lives while they tried to get everything sorted and moving. I'm not sure I'd ever seen them that stressed before, so I decided it would be best to let them settle in before voicing any complaints I might have had. That's why I didn't say anything on the first night when I kept hearing noises from my closet. It was the distinct sound of something moving around from behind the closed closet door. My bedroom, at this point, was just unpacked boxes and loose snacks I'd brought out to get through the night. My first thought was that there may be a rat problem, and I'd bring it to my parents once things were a little less hectic. It was roughly a week before I'd heard anything else. My parents were still in high stress mode, but things were beginning to settle down. I had slept peacefully through each night, and had yet to raise any concerns with the new house to my parents. This night, however, was different. I heard noises coming from behind my closet door again, but this time louder. I identified the sound as movement once again, but it was far too clunky to be any rat. Perhaps I'd been reading too many scary stories on the internet this night, but my fears got the best of me and I quickly slipped out of my room to go find my dad. He was still awake, but looking exhausted. I felt bad for bothering him, so I explained what I heard and asked if he would just do a quick check in the closet for rats, or anything else. He followed me back to my room and I stood behind him while I watched him open the closet door and look around. He moved my hanging clothes around and even pulled out a flashlight to check in the corners. When he was finished, he pulled the door all the way open and motioned at the closet. I didn't see anything, but I'll stand by if you want to look for yourself. I nodded and took the flashlight into the closet to have a look myself. Sure enough, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I shrugged at my dad and apologised for bothering him. That's okay, he told me. It's probably just some old pipes. This place is an improvement, but it's not perfect. He put a comforting hand on the top of my head. I'm going back to bed, but you wake me up if you need anything else, okay? I gave him an assuring nod and crawled back into my bed as he left the room, flicking the light off behind him. I slept through that night without any other issues. There were nights after that one, where I heard noises in the closet, but I quickly made a habit of sleeping with headphones in, to draw them out. I mentioned it to my dad a few more times, citing his theory about the pipes, but it was usually brushed off in lieu of more pressing issues with the move. Things really kicked off about three months later. I remember that I was having trouble sleeping that night, despite feeling exhausted. I had my headphones in, and I was laying on my side, staring into the darkness. It was dark enough that my tired brain could hardly discern whether my eyes were open or closed. My vision made swirls in the darkness that I tried to follow with my eyes, but they would quickly disappear. After some time, my eyes had adjusted to the darkness, and I could make out shapes in the room. My focus danced around the room, past the outlines of my bookshelves and my dresser, stopping at my closet door. There was something that stood out about the outline of my closet, but I couldn't pinpoint it right away. Then, I realised. It looked like the door was open just slightly. I tried my best to focus my sight at the bottom corner of the door. The more I considered why my closet door might be open, the faster my panic set in. I cursed my overactive imagination as I dug around my bed for my phone. My heart rate picked up with each half second that I spent combing through my sheets, trying to find my phone, until eventually my hand brushed over it. I grasped my phone tight, quickly pausing my music and keeping my breathing quiet to listen for any noise. There was only silence. I let out a small laugh and made yet another mental note to restrict my scary story reading before bedtime. Still, I felt afraid to turn on my phone's flashlight. What would I do if I really did see something? I considered how far away the nearest weapon was to me. A baseball bat in the corner of my room, I thought. I think I'm quick enough to make it over there. I pictured myself being brave and taking down an intruder with a baseball bat. This time, my imagination gave me enough courage to press the flashlight button. It was blinding at first, 
My eyes burned as I squinted through the bright light coming from my phone. The first place my sight fell was on the corner of my closet door. I waited anxiously for my vision to adjust. The corner came into view, and, confirming my fears, I saw that it was cracked open a few inches. I held my breath and let my eyes scan up the open doorway. There was a face. There was a set of fingers coiled around the edge of the door, holding it still. And right above that, there was a face. It was the face of a man, holding his breath so as not to be detected. I screamed. I wish I could say that I leapt from my bed and grabbed my baseball bat, but I'd be lying. I glued my eyelids shut, threw my covers over my head and I screamed until my lungs were out of air. Through my screaming, I heard the sound of the closet door slamming shut, followed by the sound of my bedroom door being thrown open. I only pulled the covers off my head when I heard it was my parents' voices. I sobbed into my mum's chest while my dad searched the closet. He found nothing again. He offered to let me look, but I was too shaken. I didn't let go of my mum until she agreed to call the police so they could take a look around the house. The police came and made a show of checking each of the door and window locks in the house. I followed closely behind them, making sure to double check. I could tell that all they saw was a paranoid teenager. Before they left, they asked to speak with my parents in private. I went into the guest bedroom, where I decided I would sleep that night. I overheard bits of my parents' conversation with the officers. There were lots of apologies and something about how there's always anxiety in a new house and that I'm still adjusting. I stayed in the guest room that night with the door locked. I didn't think I'd ever fall asleep, but I must have eventually. I woke up the next morning to knocking on the guest bedroom door. The knocker identified himself as a police officer, asking to be let in to speak with me. I obliged. I pulled the door open, and sure enough, there was a police officer standing just outside of it. He moved quickly to block my view through the doorway, but I saw it. I saw behind him, into the open door of my parents' bedroom. I saw their bed and carpet caked with blood. I saw behind him, into the open door of my parents' bedroom. I saw their bed and carpet caked with blood. I saw the other officers and the paramedics making haste around the house. My ears were ringing as the officer swiftly entered the room and shut the door behind him. My gut was heavy as he told me what happened. My head was light as he explained that my parents were murdered in the night by someone who came from within the house. The ringing in my ears didn't stop as the officer led me into my bedroom to get my things. It only got more deafening when I passed my open closet door and took notice of the ripped up carpet. Underneath it, a human-sized trapdoor.